All right, let's have a look at getting the E minor and A minor chords to recognize correctly in the game. Uh, these chords can be fairly tricky to get going. Uh, even though there aren't too many fingers being held down, uh, it's going to be really important to make sure that all the strings are ringing out very clearly. So we'll have a look at how to do that. Now to practice this, I'm going to go, I'm in the first chord section, I'm going to minor step, part three. And this is going to involve an E minor and an A minor chord. We'll start with this E minor chord. Notice that I'm only holding down these two fingers on the A string and the D string, but the, the E, G, B and E strings should all be open. If any of those strings aren't ringing open, especially this one here, the G string, then the chord will be marked as wrong. So I'll show you how that works. So I've got two fingers on like this. You've got your middle finger on top and your ring finger on the D string there, fret two. Now, I'm going to check each string with the pick to make sure it's ringing clearly. Most people will find you'll be doing something like this. See that dead note there on the G string there? You've got to make sure that your fingers are right up on the tips so that that string rings out clearly. If this string is dead, like that, it still sounds pretty good, but it's not quite right and the game will mark it as wrong. Can you hear that small difference there? If the G string's open, it sounds like this. If the G string's dead, it sounds like that. So, the main thing with that E minor chord is make sure that the G string is open. Now, if we have a look at the A minor chord, uh, now, we haven't got the big E string being played in that chord. We've got the A string open, and then D string fret 2, G string fret 2, B string fret 1, and then the E string, the thinnest one, is open. Okay, so again, we're going to pick through each note. Make sure it's ringing clearly. Now, for most people, the biggest challenge is going to be in this area, on the thinnest couple of strings. Often the B string, fret 1, might not be coming out clearly, and sometimes the little E string as well. So you might find yourself doing something like this. Yeah, and you need to adjust so that you're right up in your fingertips and you can make sure all of those notes are coming out very cleanly and clearly. Just like with the E minor, if those notes are dead, that still sounds pretty close, but the game's going to mark that wrong. Particularly that B string held there at fret 1, that needs to be ringing clearly. So if that's it correctly, that's incorrect, and that will be marked wrong. I know it sounds very, very similar, but if you listen carefully, that's incorrect, that's correct. Incorrect. That's correct. Okay, so I'll play through and show you how that works. So this section of the song just alternates between E minor and A minor. So E minor, that's correct. A minor, now I'm going to do the E minor a bit too flat. Wrong, A minor a bit too flat. Now correct again. Up on the fingertips. Again, correct. Okay, so hopefully you can see there that the accuracy is very good. Um, it's, it's really recognizing when I'm doing it correctly and when I'm doing it incorrectly. Uh, and it's all about the thinnest strings on both of those chords. The E minor in particular, you've got to make sure that that G string is ringing open. And for the A minor, you've got to make sure that the B and E strings in particular are ringing open. Okay, good luck.